always We ask the question. What is needed in the world? How are you? Good to see you again. Thaksin well? Shinawat hasn't think? lived in Thailand for the best part of 10 years, but his name and influence still hang over Thai politics. The former policeman from the north became a telecommunications billionaire before forming a political party in 1998 to try to challenge the establishment. He wouldn't have to wait long to take control of the country, with his Thai Rak Thai party winning the 2001 election in a landslide. He then became the first democratically elected prime minister in Thailand to serve a full term in office. And he won a second term when he swept a victory in the 2005 poll. Thaksin's success was built largely on populist policies directed at rural communities who long felt they had been looked down upon by the elite in the capital Bangkok. But attention soon turned towards his tremendous wealth. Facing increasing allegations of corruption and pressure from street protests, the military moved against him in September 2006. Thaksin was out of the country when the army staged a coup. Apart from a brief return in 2008, he's lived in self-imposed exile ever since. In absentia, he was found guilty of abusing his power over a land deal and sentenced to two years in jail. Thaksin says the charges were politically motivated and fueled by jealousy among the traditional elite who resented his popularity. That popularity continued to see supporters of him and his party, the so-called Red Shirts, regularly taking to the streets. In 2010, they camped on the streets of Bangkok for months before a violent military crackdown left more than 90 people dead. And then a year later, another Shinawat returned to the office of Prime Minister. The party of Thaksin's sister, Yingluck Shinawat, won the election and she became Thailand's first female prime minister. But when her government tried to push through a bill that would have granted amnesty to those found guilty of political crimes, more protests erupted. Opponents of the government claimed it was trying to whitewash the crimes of Thaksin Shinawat. The protests gained momentum and many of those on the streets were the same people who had protested against Thaksin's government before the 2006 coup. On the 22nd of May 2014, the army stepped in yet again and removed the Yingluck government from office. The military continues to run the country under the so-called National Council for Peace and Order. Elections have been delayed several times and are now scheduled for the middle of 2017. Also on the agenda, a referendum to approve a new constitution that critics say is designed to solidify the military's hold on power. Since the 2014 coup, Thaksin Shinawat has largely remained silent until now as he talks to Al Jazeera. Thaksin Shinawat, thank you very much for joining us in this interview. You and your sister Yingluck Shinawat, another former Prime Minister, seem to have been on a, a bit of a publicity drive lately. You released some very nice uh, photo books to the Thai people, to diplomats. You also released a calendar to the Thai people. Why is this happening now? Well, uh, we, we prefer to stay quiet, let the government uh, solve the problems. But uh, we've wait, been waiting for one and a half year. Reconciliation, reconciliation is not there. And uh, the negative campaigns against, against us is too much until it's not fair for our supporters. That's why it's time for us to just to clarify anything that has been tarnished by them. But why has it taken so long? We've had academics, we've had activists speaking out in Thailand against the, the coup that happened in 2014, against mm -hmm. uh, the government of Ying Luck Shinawat, and yet you and her, to a certain extent, have stayed very quiet. Why? Well, like I said, you know, we, we really want to give time for them to, uh, to solve the chronic problem of the country. but. It seemed like they are siding with another side. They are not really want to do reconciliation. But surely you never had any real hope that they right. would reconcile. Real, real hope for reconciling is not there. The first day, if you remember, 
when they sat together with all the uh, armed forces leaders, and they said that the reason they come for a coup d'etat is for reconciliation. If, they, if you revise the first day what they said, and now it's one and a half year, nothing is there at all. Would you say this is the start of a fight back by the Shinawans? Really, no, no, it's not really a fight back. But we just want to uh, see the country back to democratic track, not only not go out of the way to dicta dictatorial track. In one of your addresses, uh, your speeches to supporters in Thailand delivered via social media, you said something like, prepare yourselves this year. What did you mean by that? Uh, election. This year? I, I don't think the uh, government, if they still keep doing like this, they can, they can satisfy the public or they can bring uh, the country back to uh, normal economic track, e economic path that we are, we, we should we should have grown, but now our economy is very very slow, and very bad. The people are poor, they, you know, they they, they have no hope. So, are you suggesting that they will be forced into holding an election this year because they're saying it's not going to be until next I, year? I I. Th I think the situation will not allow them to enjoy the power that much because the way they run the country, they should, I think they should, you know, like I said, any regime that careless about their own people will not be last long. So they have, they have to give more care to the people. I don't mind if, you, if they, they want to stay hang on power, but they must uh, move the country forward and they must care about the, the people, even they're not come from election. But it being state, it's not just only land, but it's the people in the state as well. So where will that pressure come from? If they are to fold and hold an election this year, mm. if they cannot hold out, as you say, I don't know. How's that going to happen? No, I'm, I'm just guessed that the way they, they treat the people, the way they run the country, the way other countries look at Thailand. It's quite, uh, it, you know, if they really, if they really love the people and the country as they claim, they should let the country back to democracy. We mentioned the coup that happened in 2014 against yes. the government of your mm -hmm. sister, Ying Lakshinawat. What was your first reaction when you heard there had been yet another coup? Well, I, after the, uh, the, the demonstration, when I noticed that, that there, was, there were some military camouflage in the, in, in, in the, in the, in the cloud, in the mobs, I, I think that's the plan of coup d'etat. And then before the, I think around April, if I were to remember, they start to put bunkers on the street. You remember? And some, they try to put bunkers on the street in Chiang Mai as well. So I know immediately that they plan to stage the coup. But they would say they were merely ensuring the security of Thai uh, people. No, no, not that. Because you know, when they camouflage um, some military personnel into the, into the uh, Sutep uh, mobs. And then the way they communicate with my sister at that time, I know, I know that, this gonna, that that's gonna happen. So this was a planned event from, w planned well before the coup yes. actually happened? Yes. Do you believe? Yes. As soon as those protesters hit the streets? Yes. So what sort of government are we heading for, do you believe? We have a, uh, another constitution being written now, which appears mm -hmm. to be Mm -hmm. less than democratic, an election possibly happening next year, possibly an appointed prime minister. Where a are we heading? Appointed prime minister and they'll have a politburo to look, to supervise the government, elected government. And then you have the uh, 
uh, long uh, term national stra strategy, so called, and for 20 years to control to the, uh, the way the government is running. So this is the constitution where they just don't care, don't respect the people, the people voice. So the people has no power whatsoever. They vote, the whole country vote for government, which the, the, the party that they vote may not be able to, to, uh, to, to have the prime ministership. But at the same time, they cannot learn anything on their own platform. They have to go according to the uh, strategy which is set forth by the military. <laughs> which is ridiculous. This is the, I think it's probably worse than the uh, constitution of Myanmar before the reform. But don't you think that the longer this goes on, the longer that this government stays in power, the mm -hmm. people might just get used to it. We have, whether you like it or not, a fairly stable government in place. Mm -hmm. There is relative security on the streets. There are no mm -hmm. protesters. Mm -hmm. But maybe people will think this isn't so bad after all. I, yeah, but if, if the people are very poor, very poor, the, the country is, you know, the export has a lot of problem. We have no f future plan for the future. That, that is I, I, it's contradicting. Is there any company in the world that promote the uh, chief security into CEO? But the companies who have invested in Thailand so heavily, international companies, most of them seem to be staying put. We're not seeing big business fleeing the country so far. Well, they know that the election is going to be next year. That's what they believe. If it were to be, if it were that they keep their promise, and then you know it's only one year, and if they were the democracy coming back, they they can just stay put. Yeah, you mentioned the economy. Uh, do you believe that the military government is mismanaging the economy right now? Are they out of their depth when it comes to running the country economically? Yes. And yet they've hired one of your former allies as, as a finance minister, a man who is bringing back many populist policies, if you like, to try and mm -hmm. stimulate uh, the economy. Well, uh, I, I feel flattening that they use our, our policies, but living economy is like, when we can make analogies like wireless. When it's, uh, things are muted, wireless can be muted, until it's stubborn to the, the old medicine. This is economy, economy is living economy. The combination is, of the problem is change. The situation was changed. Sometimes the old prescription may not work. But the situation internationally has changed as well, and yes. there are yes. international pressures on yes. Thailand's economy. So yes. aren't they doing an okay job considering that global demand is slowing and affecting Thailand's exports? Well. We are one of the leading economy in ASEAN, but we are the lowest growth in GDP of ASEAN. Is that, is that a proof, something? Ying Lak Shinawat, your sister, former prime minister, is now uh, under investigation, being charged with mm -hmm. dereliction of duty. Uh, mismanaging the rice scheme while she was prime minister, which was a scheme that was mm -hmm. uh, designed to pay farmers way above market price uh, for mm -hmm. their, their rice crops. Mm -hmm. Was this another Shinawat populist policy that was badly managed and went horribly wrong? Well, this is the only case in the world where you set up the policy platform and you have to be responsible for it. But the policy platform is accepted by the people who vote for you landslide. The philosophy behind that, this is we, we, when we proud of being number one exporter of rice, we should keep their carrier 
they must be a farmers. But they, if they, we want them to be farmers, they have to live their life at a decent life and uh, with pastries. Not just only they just, oh, farmers, you do it, you lost money, you, gonna, you have to do it regardless. That is not fair for them. That's the reason why, because majority of our Thai are farmers in the rural area. So that's why we have to be to look after their livelihood. They play, they play of that, and the way when they get the money, they, 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 they mortgage their rice, they only deduct that they can be deduct is only about moisture. That is by, by is a general rules. And then, you know, she, they, when they have the money they consume, we collect more VAT tax, which is, you know, the money has been, has been uh, spent in the, in, the, in the economy, and we collect VAT. But you also have a responsibility when you implement a policy like that to manage it properly. Didn't you just let it get it out, or Yingluck let it get out of control, that there was not enough uh, control on that specific well, policy? you know, uh, the government level, we put policy in place. But the government official, they have the system in place. But unlucky that at that time, India, first time in history, sold 9 million tons of rice of their own stock because their uh, crops output is very strong at, at that year. And plus, you know, the, the opposition start to attack. Oh, we have too much rice. Our rice is not good. The trader, instead of buying rice, keep on their own stock. They just stay put, don't buy yet and let us keep the stock. That's the, it's, and also flood, you see. This un, very unfortunate, but it's not really that she cares. She, she work hard, she in stock. Everyone have to be taking good care of pushing uh, sale of rice. So if Yingluck wasn't corrupt in that particular process, was there corruption beneath her? Is that what you're saying? In the process? Well, you know, in the process, you cannot find uh, uh, there in even in private sector there may, may be some loopholes, which is the if the smaller organization they can pluck the loophole, but the big organization sometimes loophole has been there. Because the, our systems not computerized yet. This is the bad part of us. If we computerize by uh, uh, giving the licensing to the farmers, you're gonna know exactly how many uh, acres, how they lie of lands that they, they, they go pretty we, we If we computerize everything, it will be, but we are on the process of the computerization of the process. And after that, if it's finished, it will be better control. I wanna talk about your life now as well, because September this year, as I'm sure you're well aware, marks 10 years since the, the coup that ousted mm. you and your government uh, from yes. power. If you look back, did you ever think that you would still be living in exile 10 years after that coup? Yes. Why? Um, well, when uh, I have to stay abroad, I have to adapt myself. But you don't have to stay abroad. You could go back at any time and face the consequences and you, join your people in the fight, join your supporters. I, if I were there, who can do my safety? I've been assassinated at Tim four times when I was Prime Minister. So you think if you went back now that your life would be in danger? Definitely. Who? Who, who, who wants to kill you? I cannot say anything. I cannot tell. I cannot tell. I don't know who. I, cannot who. I don't know who. But I've been assassinated, attempted, and I try to find the facts. And even the witness, at, uh, during my, the car bomb, the witness has said in, in August 2006 that they will try to kill me. If not success, they're going to stage coup against me. And if the coup success, who's going to be the prime minister that the witness has been 
giving uh, testimony on uh, August, September 19. I've been stage coup data. And October, they appoint the prime minister that mentioned by the witness. So you're saying then that it's everything the, is planned. So you're saying it's the army who would try to kill you. Related to, uh, I don't know, I don't know who is, but I, you know, it, it's quite clear. Mm. With hindsight, though, has staying away from Thailand mm. been a mistake in terms of the support, the figure that you could have become if you were in Thailand, assuming you were still alive? I mean, you mean uh, if I'm, I, go, I cannot go back in the beginning, and then uh, they they're trying to keep me outside. Yes, but even one of your key allies in Thailand, a red shirt leader, Jataporn Prompan, very recently said, "If Taksin had stayed in the country, it would not have turned out like this." He said, "Taksin fleeing the country became a costly lesson." This is a key red shirt leader, one of your well, people if I on the stay streets. In the country, I've been killed. Everything, you know, the symbolic of, of 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 fighting for democracy may not be there. I don't know. I don't know. I'm I'm not thinking that I'm I'm very important, but I don't know. I cannot predict. It. I cannot predict. Some in recent years have issued dire warnings about Thailand speculated that the country eventually will descend into civil war. Is that going too far? I don't think so. The Thai are very peaceful. You know, even now they, uh, the junta leader turned themselves, turned the whole Thai to be enlisted men of the armed forces. And they're still, they're still very peaceful and quiet. Do you have support within the military? Have you I, actively I sought? I don't know. Support. I never thought. I never thought. I can tell you what the imagination of many people in Thailand, especially my opposition, may think that oh, I'm ready to fight back. You know, I live my life peacefully. I'm happy. If they not get involved with me, I never say anything. Even they attack me, I still keep quiet. I try not to be. I try not to live my life. Uh, it, not too involved, but you know, they. That's what I I I ask that why don't I don't want to see the country like this, but I keep telling them don't don't worry about me, don't afraid of me, don't afraid of revenge or anything. I love as a former prime minister, definitely I love my country and love my people. And you would love to go back, I'm sure. I'm okay now. I'm get used to. I get used to. If I have to go back, if I can go back, definitely I want to. If not, I'm okay. I can stay in every country. But it seems without you and without your leadership, without your guidance, there will be no significant opposition on the streets, if you like, uh, to this military government. Why have we not seen any significant opposition so far? The military, they keep urging publicly, that they want to do reconciliation. They want to move the country forward. But this is one and a half year. No sign of reconciliation. In vice versa, they really siding with one side and then pressure another side. That's the, the reconciliation is not there. Moving the country forward, I see it backward more than forward. So this is what we start to worry. And when come the draft constitution, which is bad constitution ever, if we can compare, I don't know that we can compare to North Korea or not. Has time run out for this government then? I think they have to come back on the first day what they promised to the people and, and the world, that they're gonna do this for reconciliation. They have to bring the videotape of the first day of the announce of coup d'etat and then revise it. That's, that's what I'm asking for. I never ask anything for myself. 
And are you talking directly to the military right now? No. No. And then they even said they don't want to talk. But I don't, I don't care. I just keep trying to warn them that don't worry about me. Worry about the country and the people. The state, not just only the land, but it's the people in, in the state. Thaksin Shinawat, thank you very much. Thank you, Sewing. Thank you.